Hello, and welcome to Building Codes for Building Decks, Ledgers and Lateral Loads. In this session, we're going to continue talking about ledger attachment, but we're going to get specific to the ledger fastener locations. We'll start by looking at this section here that outlines the requirements for the ledger to band joist connection. And the first requirement is that the fasteners be either hot dipped galvanized or stainless steel. That's easy. And from here, it's going to get a little bit messier. It also references a table with fastener distance limitations and a figure depicting more different limitations. And there's a second figure as well that shows it to us from the side just to help you realize how complicated this is. Now, I'm not saying this lightly. This is the most unusable and infeasible prescriptive design code ever published. I'm going to do my best to explain this to you while also hoping you understand why I'm saying these ugly words. Let's start with the first table that it references. And everything in these graphics that looks like wood, that's going to be the house framing. So we see a band joist here on a double top plate with a three quarter inch subfloor. I'm going to use this green square with an orange outline as the ledger. And it's transparent so that we can combine the various placement limitations of the band joist with the ledger. And the goal here is we want to see how far below the floor we can attach this ledger. A lot of regions with snow, it's common to design a step down. And the step down also helps to properly flash a counter flash above the ledger and also be able to properly seal the door threshold. So we'll do the easy stuff first. For both the ledger and the band joist, fasteners have to be at least two inches away from any end or from both sides of an end to end break. It's going to get a little complicated as we carry on. So I'm using solid orange for the areas you cannot place a fastener in the ledger and solid red where you can't place it in the band joist. Now, there also must be a fastener within five inches of each end of a ledger or both sides of a break. All right, let's move on now to the top and bottom edges. There are no fasteners permitted in the top three quarter inches of the band joist or the bottom two inches. So I've got those marked out in red, no fasteners. Now let's bring the ledger in and it's the same except it flips two inches at the top and three quarter at the bottom. When you see the puke green color, this is the area left where fasteners can be placed. Now the fasteners also have to be staggered. They're staggered up and down across the ledger according to the minimum horizontal distance required from the design table I presented in the previous session. But there are limits to the vertical height of this stagger. The stagger between the lower and upper fastener can be no less than one and five eighths inch vertical distance and no more than five inches between them. All right, that's it. We're done with this table. Now we've got to add all of this to it. So there's a minimum allowable distance from the bottom fastener to the top of the ledger. And it's different for each of the three different ledger sizes recognized in the IRC. It's seven and a half inches on a two by 12, six and a half inches on a two by 10, and five and a half inches on a two by eight. Though there's an exception for that one we're going to get to a little later. So we're going to shade this in with orange because this means now that the lower fastener cannot be in these orange ledger areas. And that's going to affect the vertical height of this ledger compared to the band joist. Now I've made this drawing as close to scale as I could. And what it's showing is a two by eight band joist. Let's get rid of the interior floor sheathing and we'll also not show any decking on the ledgers. This is just to make it easier and compare simply the ledger to the band joist. Now, if we overlay those three ledgers like this, we can see that we've reduced a bit of our, uh, of our puke green area, but we'd also have to obviously lower them because they're higher than the floor. But we can't do that yet because we've got to put in the previous area for no fasteners on the band joist. 
And you can see here we have a problem. Our green area is getting rather small. And we've lost it completely on the 2 by 8. And that's where the exception comes in. The exception allows a minimum distance to be reduced from 5.5 inches to 4.5 inches, but only when a 2 by 8 ledger is on a 2 by 8 band joist. Okay, but we still need to now bring these ledgers down as much as we can, and we can see that we don't have a lot of room to do so. So what we're going to do is lower the ledger so that the lower fastener can't go any lower on the band joist because of the red, but it also can't go any higher on the ledger because of the orange. And what we're going to find is that a 2x12 and a 2x10 ledger over the top of a 2x8 band joist, well, it's going to be above the 2x8 band joist. And you may have a tough time with the door coming out of the house to that deck. If we take this same math now and we comply it to, apply it to a 2x10 band joist, it's going to look like this. And we see that that 2x12 ledger still is not going to work here. And so much for talking about a step down at this point, right? Finally, if we look at a 2x12 band joist, we actually get options for all three ledger sizes. However, the largest step down that we can come up with using the IRC prescriptive design tables is a three and three quarter inch step, which ironically is just a quarter inch less than the minimum height step still considered safe for the public in the International Building Code. Sigh. Now we got to dig into the last figure because it gets more complicated. No, I'm just kidding. This figure is just an elevation view of the same things we've already talked about. But I want you to imagine trying to figure out all these parameters between outside on the ledger and inside in the band joist and do this in the backyard of a real house and not on a computer. Then consider the few ledger to band joist combinations that would be even below the interior floor. And I'm hoping you may understand now my previous bold comment just a little bit better. My name is Glenn Mathewson. Thanks for learning with me. This course has been provided to you by buildingcodecollege.com, where we go beyond the words.